and welcome to my channel. I hope that you are all good. Again, apologies that it's been a little while since I uploaded. However, here I am with today's video, which is some neon designer inspired nails. I'm working on my Glamalis practice hand. I've already applied my tips and a thin clear base. As always in the description box below, there is a discount code that gets you 10% off at Glamalis. So do check that out if you are looking for a practice hand. So as the title said, today I'm encapsulating gel polish in acrylic and I'm doing this to create an ombre with both gel polish and acrylic. This was my first time attempting this, but I was really pleased with how easy it was to do and how good it turned out I was quite impressed with the ombre so as I said I've already applied my tips and clear base and I just buffed over these two nails that I'm doing this on slightly so that the acrylic was nice and even and then I'm applying a thin layer of gel polish fading it out just like I would if I was doing an ombre with acrylic so that there's not a harsh straight line where that gel polish finishes so I'm keeping this first layer quite thin I'm not worrying about creating too much coverage. I'm just wanting to get that color down. I especially don't want it to be too pigmented up at that blend area. So that's why you can see I'm just feathering it out with my brush. And I'm then gonna pop this first coat in to cure for 60 seconds. And then once that's cured, I'm going to come in and do a second coat. And this gel polish, by the way, is number 102 from DMN Beauty. It's such a gorgeous neon orange. And I absolutely am loving the DMN brand at the moment. I've been using their builder gels. So I thought I'd try a couple of their gel polishes as well. And I'm really impressed with them. As you can see, with this second coat, I'm not taking it all the way up to that fade area. I'm sort of very gently taking it up to it and blending it out because like I said, we don't want there to be that harsh line because we've got to create our fade with acrylic. But same as before, once I've applied this second coat, I will pop it in to cure for 60 seconds. I'm then gonna come in with some alcohol and just wipe off that tacky inhibition layer. You can use, you know, alcohol or gel residue wipe off cleanser solution whatever you like to call it so once I have removed that tacky layer I'm just going to really gently buff the surface of the gel polish it looks like I'm being quite vigorous but it's because I've sped up the video I'm simply taking off that shine you don't want to buff too much because you will remove the color and we don't want to do that we just want it to have a not smooth surface like gel polish leaves so that our acrylic has something to grab onto so at the tip there, I did take off a tiny bit more color than I wanted to. So I did off camera, just touch that up with a little nail art brush. So then once I'd finished off buffing and dusted away all of the dust, I'm coming in with my acrylic. So this is CJP Peach Sorbet. So on this now, I started off with quite a large bead and I regretted it. I wish I'd done this in smaller beads. So I do do that on the next nail. But basically what I've done is placed down my bead of acrylic at the cuticle area, tapped it up into place and got a nice neat cuticle line. And then I'm just dragging that color down over the gel polish to create our fade. So peach sorbet is quite pigmented. So I did find it was taking over the color a little bit more than what I wanted. So I just keep my brush quite wet with Monoma and wipe off any of that excess. As you can see here, I'm just pulling off any excess that I take too far down the nail. And then I am gonna come in with some more acrylic to perfect that ombre. You have, when doing it like this, you have got to sort of create and perfect your ombre using the acrylic because I don't think it'd be possible to come in with any more gel polish. And then as you can see, I'm just coming in with some more beads of acrylic. I'm working medium to wet so that I can blend the acrylic into the previous bead of acrylic, but also blend it out to create my fade. Like I said before, just keeping my brush wet so that I can pull off any excess color that's gone over that orange. And I'm just constantly brushing and smoothing that acrylic out so that there's no unnecessary lumps and bumps. And here I'm just taking a look at the ombre and seeing where I need to come in with a little bit more of that peach color. So I just felt as though the side here needed to bring, I needed to bring the nude color a little bit further down. So that's just what I did there. And then what I would do is when encapsulating this now, I've pretty much built up my apex with the peach sorbet. So I'll just cap from the blend down, but I did leave encapsulation in on one now for this video. So you will see how I do that further on in the video. 
And then once I'm happy with that, I'll leave that to set and we can move on and do the same on the ring finger. But like I said, I worked slightly different. I just used smaller beads and I found it a lot easier. So the first bead, I'm popping down at that cuticle area. I'm tilting the finger downwards and tapping that acrylic up into place to get a nice neat cuticle line. And then I'm just dragging the top of that bead down to start creating the fade, keeping my brush wet so I can pull off any excess acrylic. And then I'm just going to repeat this process until I'm happy with the blend. So I'm just coming in with more beads of acrylic to build up that coverage at the nail bed area and just to create as perfect fade as I could possibly create. So as you can see, always blending out the back of the next bead of acrylic that I pop down and then I'm just dragging the top of that bead down the nail. And I really do love a CJP peach sorbet for a nude ombre. It's definitely one of my go-tos, although it's quite pigmented. It's just, it just blends really nicely, to be honest. I find that whenever I use this in an ombre, I don't really have any trouble or any problems or struggle. It, every color I've tried it with, it's blended nicely with, basically. And then I'm just using really light, feathery strokes to blend out the acrylic because I just find this really helps create the ombre or really helps create a nicer blend. And then I just keep repeating this process until I'm happy with the coverage. I like to build up my apex with the nude color that I'm using if it's a core powder, which peach sorbet is, because this then means I just have to encapsulate from the fade down, but that's personal preference. You could keep this layer thin and then encapsulate the entire nail if need be. So again, I'm using my wet brush to make sure that I've cleaned off any of that excess peach sorbet that I don't want at the tip area. We want the tip area to be that nice, vibrant, bright, orange and then this is what those ombres are looked like so far again I'm just making sure that they match up and that I'm happy of how far down the nail that the fade comes and just coming in with some small beads here and there if it's needed And then I'm going to leave those to set and I will encapsulate them further on in the video. So on to the pointer finger, I'm coming in with peach sorbet. I've got a medium sized bead. I'm placing it down at that cuticle area. As you can see, really tilting that nail downwards because this really helps with working around the cuticle area. It just stops that product running back and flooding your cuticles. And then I'm just pulling that color down towards the free edge. I don't need the free edge to be fully opaque because we're going to be doing a glitter fade but I did just come in with another bead at the nail bed area just to build up the coverage a little bit more and like I said same on the previous ombre now if I'm doing anything that's like a fade and I'm using a core color I usually just build my apex up with that color. And then I'm going to be using this gorgeous glitter from a a Glitters. This has such a beautiful reflection to it. Just it's absolutely stunning, especially for the summer. So like I said, I'm doing a simple glitter fade on this nail. So I'm picking this glitter up with a bead of my CJP Crystal Glass, placing it down at the tip of the nail. And I'm trying to get full coverage at the very tip of the nail and then just nudging that acrylic up just to start creating the fade. So I'm making sure to keep my brush full of monomer so it makes it easy to move those particles of glitter around. You can put a matching color underneath the glitter if you don't want to use loads of glitter. But with this particular mix, I find it quite easy to create full coverage. So that's why I haven't popped a color underneath today. I'm just working with the glitter and building it up. And then like I said, I'm just simply fading it back I wanted the focus of this design to be on the middle two nails. So that's why I kept the pointer and the ring finger quite simple. And whenever I'm doing a simple set, I love to go in with a glitter fade because I just think they look really, really pretty. And although they're quite simple to do, they're really, really effective. So if you are ever unsure what to do on a nail, I would always recommend going for a glitter fade. I'm just fading out that glitter until I'm happy with it, making sure it's quite appealing to the eye and isn't a block line. Just blend it out nicely, nudging those pieces around until I'm happy with it. And then I'll allow the glitter to set before encapsulating. So whilst I'm waiting for that, I'm just gonna move on to the little finger and I'm doing a full now of that peach sorbet. So I'm just gonna do this in the free bead method. I was struggling with my acrylic application to be honest today. Um, or not today because I recorded this around three, four days ago. 
Um, but I hadn't done any acrylic in a while. I've been working with the builder gels that I ordered and I've been super, super busy. And I really felt as though in this video, my acrylic application was just off. And then it come to doing a plain basic nude nail and I felt like I just couldn't remember how to apply acrylic. So it's quite messy, but it is what it is. And it's one of those sets where you're glad you've got a file. But basically, I'm just doing a full now of the peach sorbet. The video did cut off at the end. I basically come in and do this third bead of acrylic here. And then the video cuts off. But off camera, or it was on camera, but it didn't show it. I did just pop another small bead down just to build up the apex slightly. Because you'll see the nail does look a little bit thin there. But then we've jumped to encapsulating. So I'm just going to show you encapsulating on the one nail. But I just washed over the nail with some monomer. And then I'm coming in with my bead of crystal glass. Like I said, I cap from the fade down. So I've placed it down at that blend area, slightly blended out the back of the bead, and then I'm walking it down towards the free edge. Now the free edge of this now was super, super thin because all we've got is that clear layer, clear base layer of acrylic, and then our two thin coats of gel polish. So I do come in and build up the tip with my clear acrylic because even though I'm working on my practice hand, I like to make sure I'm still building up the correct structure. So that's what I'm doing here. I was just having a look and thought, nope, the tip looks too thin. And this will, if this was on myself, it would probably snap. So I just come in with another bead of acrylic just to build up that thickness slightly. Just keeping everything as even as possible. I try to get my application as neat as possible so that there is minimal filing. But like I said, today was a bit of an off day. But once I am happy with that, I did encapsulate all the rest of the nails off camera. I did also do all the filing and buffing off camera. And this is what the design looked like so far. So the two ombre nails, I'm going to be using some water decals. But first of all, on the little finger, we're going to come in with that same neon gel polish, which I think I said at the start of the video, but it's 102 from DMN Beauty. As always, I will leave all the products I use in the description box below. So do check that out. I'm just going to come in with two coats of this on the little finger, curing each coat for 60 seconds. I'm just doing my best here to get a little bit closer to that cuticle. So as you can see, I'm just sort of wriggling my brush right up to it. And then I'll pop that in to cure. I'm then going to come in and apply the second coat. And I apply this exactly the same as the first coat. So I'm keeping it nice and thin. These polishes from DMN Beauty, the ones I've tried so far, are very highly pigmented. So you definitely only need two coats of them. And the only difference I do on the second coat with my gel polishes, I do cap the free edge. So you just see there, I slightly cap that free edge. And then we're going to come in and apply our water decals. And I just wanted to show you another way that I apply my water decals sometimes, especially if I'm doing them on myself or if they're like the ones I'm using today where they're images that I might need to move around to get them into place. So what I'm coming in doing, first of all, is applying a thin layer of base coat. So I'm using the DMN rubber base, which is slightly thicker than your regular base coat. Usually if I was doing something like this, I would use a standard base coat, but I just had this one to hand so that's why you can see I'm just going over it slightly a couple of times with my brush just so it's a nice thin layer but what I basically do is keep this layer wet and I apply my water decals into that wet layer of base coat so I've still soaked them into the water so that they peel off of their backing paper these particular water decals are from Candy Nails UK and here I'm just dragging it over my glove just to remove any of that excess water so I with the base coat down, it basically means you can move them around a lot easier because they're not going to yet stick to the nail. And it also means you can really push out any creases. So I find that with lettering like this, if you do have any creases in it, it really stands out. So by having that layer of base coat down, you can really push and manipulate them into place without worrying about them drying and sticking or without worrying about the image getting ruined or tearing, etc. So I just find it a little easier. And then what I'm doing is I'm just using a gel brush just to sort of move that into place until I'm happy with how it's placed. Here, I just come over the nail again just to make sure that layer of base coat was a lot thinner. 
and then I'll show you once more. So I'm dragging out that excess water and originally I was going to put sort of one decal at the top end of one nail and this one lower down but looking at it I just thought it really didn't look right. So you'll see I'm easily able to move them around still. So I just come in with that gel brush and I'm just pulling that decal further up the nail. And I just find this way a lot easier to be quite honest than sticking them on with just regular water. If it's something like flowers or hearts or whatever, images where you haven't got to be so picky where you're placing them on the nail, then I just do them the regular way. But with things like this where you might want to move it around until you're happy with how it's placed or you're a little bit fussy. I was feeling a little bit fussy with how I was going to place these. I just find doing them with the base coat, it really makes it a lot easier. But basically, once I have got them in place and I'm happy with where they are, I'll pop them in to cure for 60 seconds so that that base coat has then set those decals in place. And we're then ready to come in and top coat. So I'm top coating the pointer finger with the DMN Beauty No Wipe Top Coat. So this is a glossy top coat. But the remaining three nails I'm going to do with their matte top coat. So I wanted the glitter nail to be nice and sparkly. But I did want the remaining three nails to have that matte effect. I thought I was just really feeling some neon matte nails. And then when I used the designer logos as well, I definitely thought these would look better matte. So I'm just applying a nice even layer of that to all of the nails and then I will pop them in to cure for 60 seconds and then guys that's pretty much the end of the video I really hope you all enjoyed watching I'm sorry I haven't uploaded regular I've just got a hell of a lot going on when things calm down hopefully I'll be able to upload a bit more consistently but in the meantime I'm just popping up videos whenever I get the chance so I do hope you enjoy watching them if you do then please give them a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed I would love it if you hit that subscribe button I hope you're all keeping safe and well I know a lot of my now tech friends in the UK were back to work today so I hope it is all going great for you guys and I shall hopefully see you all again in the next video lots of love take care bye bye